You're listening to Jonesy's Jukebox on Cal OS. That was The Stranglers, bitching. And we had David Byrne, everybody's coming to my house. And uh, that's it. It is about, let me just check. It's seven minutes after 12 bells on a Friday. You know what that means? It means it's Friday. I'm just saying that because everyone else says it. I don't, every day's Friday. <laughs> kind of. Friday's the best day of the week. Yes. And we're here with Robbie Krieger. That's who was just speaking. And sport artist Scott Medlock. Did I say that correct? Yes. Yeah, Sports good. artist. He paints uh, all the golfers and uh, baseball players and stuff like that. Go Dodgers. Do you, do you get can do you do you get assigned to to paint in these? Will you just do them? Yeah. No, I do them for the uh, for Major League Baseball or for PJ Tour. So they hire you to to paint them. Yeah, I do them for a lot of the athletes are good buddies of mine. So we do them for them, or we'll do them for the for the uh, for the venue. So when you paint them, then they go into like for golf, for instance. There is no golf place, is there really? Yeah, it's more like they use it to promote the event or to commemorate the event. If it's a big, you know, if Tiger wins the U.S. Open or what have you. Yeah. So I kind and of they like auction it. them for charities and stuff. Yeah. Was, he's doing good, isn't he? Tiger Woods. He's doing oh, good. Hell yeah, yeah. man! He just won a big tournament. Yeah, first one in five years, I think. Yeah. Yeah, and it was a, a big one. It was like with all the best 30 golfers in the world playing. So it wasn't a BS tournament. You know? Yeah. Was there an English bloke in there? I saw a little bit on TV like a week ago. Absolutely. A lot of yeah, great English players. a couple players. of them. A couple of them. Who, who was that? Justin English? Rose. Yeah, Justin Rose. Yeah, he won it all. He, 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 yeah. won, he won the uh, Olympics golf thing. Yeah. Who started golf? I think Robbie Krieger uh, started Queen golf. Mary of Scots, I believe. Robbie Krieger started golf. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was back in Scotland uh, in the... So it was a Scottish thing? 1600s, I think. They they uh, supposedly uh, started football, to, soccer, too, originally. Really? Even though English won credit for it, I think the, the Scots had something to do with it, like being at the very beginning. Are you Scottish? No. I'm just a limey. <laughs> I mean, I'm American. For Christ's yeah, sakes, Robbie. Come on. I know. Um, so the reason you're here is? To hang out with you. Just that? <laughs> I can. Do, I hang out with you on the street. <laughs> I know. At 11 at night. <laughs> I know. I walk my dog and Jonesy drives by on his way home from somewhere. That's when you asked me, she said, can I come on the radio? I said, all right. All right. But uh, there's a, you know there's a big thing on uh, next week, the 30th, for that thing that's going on. Uh, Halloween? No, that bloody hotel that we don't want. Oh, that, that's right. That's right. You're coming? Uh, next Tuesday? Yeah. I'm going to be busy. Oh, I'd crap. like to tell you why I'm going to be busy, but I can't right now. It's a secret? It's kind of a secret. It involves Sunset Boulevard, and it involves uh, a certain club. It starts with an R. Oh. Otherwise, I would love to be at the uh, the thing. I like. Yeah. I, I I spoke to someone. They said it ain't gonna happen. Well, I mean, I I don't see how it could. But uh, you know, we're, the, these people are trying to build a hotel up behind my house and Jonesy's house, up in in the canyon, and uh, he's trying to change the zoning laws and all this. And if that happens, then the whole Santa Monica Mountains are at Could risk. Could be hotels, know. yeah. Yeah. And so we're all getting together and trying to uh, stop this uh, thing from happening. I'd be more nervous if I was you than me. Though. I but mean, you your place is right on an entrance of where it's going to be. Yeah. Oh my, oh, my house. Yeah. The the parking structure, which would hold 700 cars, yeah. would be right behind my house, <laughs> which would be a disaster. You should sell it now. <laughs> if all the zoning. <laughs> you know, I mean, he's got 30 acres up there, you know, and I could have bought that 30 acres 50 years ago when I moved into my house. Could have bought it for 40 grand. Get out of here. Yeah. No. He oh, bought, man. Yeah. He just bought it for 10 million. Yeah. It belonged to the Kokorian bloke. Right. Kirk Kokorian. He, he must have sold it. Is that how much he sold it to then? 10 yeah. mil to this guy? Uh-huh. 
something like that. He's a, he's, an, he's a, what did you call him? Yeah, they call him the, the sky, they call him the stealth developer. He comes in, no one notices it until it's too late. Right, and then uh, lawsuits, and this guy has like 37 lawsuits going really? or something like that. Really? Yeah. Do you have a banner outside your house? Yeah, yeah, stop the hotel. I have one outside my house. I'm the only one on our, my street that has one out. Really? I think a lot of people, like you say, they don't care until it's don't too know, late. They don't realize, yeah, I mean, you know how much the traffic would be horrible if that happened there? And... You know, fire. Uh, if there was a fire, man, it would be a disaster because uh, they've got. If that, if they had a hotel up there, there would be like 500 cars a day extra going up and down those streets, those yeah. little streets. You know. Yeah. So can't happen. We gotta stop them, Robbie. Yeah, uh, I, I met this uh, our senator Hen uh, Henry Stern. Yeah. You know that guy. I know, but he's a cool guy. He he used to live in Benedict Canyon, and uh, so he's he's on our side now. And uh, Coretz has just come out against it. Oh, the the councilman. Yeah. So he's on our side. Yeah, again. he's on our side now. Oh, well, that's it then. Made a public statement. And the story. I hope so. That certainly help. Uh, unless it's just all nonsense he's saying to take the heat off us punters <laughs> <laughs> thinking he's a bad dude. <laughs> This guy ain't stealth for nothing. He's probably got some tricks up his sleeve. Oh, man, I'm sure he's paid off a lot of people. Yeah. He should, he should buy it. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, so you've got the uh, 2018 Rock and Roll Golf Classic. There's a Saturday, October 27th, Rock and Ride. Yeah. Sunday, October 28th, All Star Concert. And Saddle Rock Ranch, Malibu. That's where it's going to be? Yeah, right. That's off of, Malibu. That's off of Mulholland there, right? Yeah, it's up near uh, um, Canaan Road and Mulholland. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a beautiful place. And then Monday, 29th of October, Rock and Roll Golf Classic. That's much, so Monday's the golf day? Yeah, at uh, Moore Park Golf Club. Yeah. Are you a and golfer? It, I've never... I've, I think I got one in one of them ranges once where everyone's <laughs> just hitting balls. Yeah. I did that once. All right, you're a golfer then. Not, re not really. <laughs> <laughs> um, benefiting St. Jude's Children Research Hospital. Info at medlockkrieger.com. Right. So you a big golfer then? Yeah, yeah. My dad was a golf nut, and he uh, he got me playing when I was about eight years old. Is it like one of them things that when you start it, you like get addicted to it? Yeah, exactly. Are you a golfer it's, too? Yeah. Yeah, that's how we met. In fact, oh, no. he was he was painting the the winner of the L.A. Open in 1991. Yeah, back in the day. Who won? Uh, Ted Schultz won that year. Never heard of him. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Me neither. But he's got a painting. What well, What is it about golf that's that that you enjoy? It, it's like the a, pace. It, you know what? I call it the only good addiction. Yeah, because it's it's good for you. It's not unhealthy. Uh, only problem is it takes way too much time out of the day. But um, it's very much like playing music. You know, you have to get out of your own way if you're going to play good. Yeah, you know how that is. You're out in, na in nature. That's good. Yeah, that's that. that's a cool thing too. You're out in nature. And a lot of business is uh, done on the on the. Yeah, for sure. A lot of. Uh, Wheeling and dealing. Uh huh. Uh huh. But you is 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 the main thing. I mean, do you think your game always gets better, or you're just going to get as good as you are, and it stays that way? You know what I mean? Well, I mean, there's after, different levels, isn't there? After a certain age, you, you're not going to get any better. You're only going to get worse. You know? Yeah. But, but, yeah. Uh, you know, you get smarter at the game, and 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 that makes up for it. So. Yeah. Or you get too many swing thoughts, and then you're really screwed. Yeah, well, that's why I said you got to stay out of your own way. You, you know, you you see all these uh, people on TV giving you tips and stuff. And, oh yeah. And then that gets in your <laughs> your yeah. brain, and it's better not to think about all that stuff. Yeah. It's like when you're playing guitar, you just you don't want to think, oh, I'm playing an E flat or F sharp. You know. Yeah. You just want to play. I'm with you there, buddy. Do you practice much at home with your guitar? Uh, as little as possible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
doesn't do me much good. I mean, I, I do just to get warmed up, you know. If, if, I, if I got a tour or something, I'll get, uh, you know, I'll, I'll practice because uh, I'm, if I'm out of uh, You get of sloppy, you've got to get your chops down. Right, exactly. Do you tour much, though? What do you do now? Uh, not a whole lot lately. Um, I got my son singing in my in my band where we do the Doors stuff, you know. So that's really fun. Is it all Doors? Yeah, when we do, uh, you know, it's been the 50th anniversary of the Doors yeah. now for three years. Yeah. <laughs> so farewell. Uh, yeah. So we've been doing that for the last three years. Uh, you know, I do jazz stuff too, and jazz rock and that kind of stuff. But I haven't done that lately. Although I got a new uh, record coming out uh, with some jazz and stuff on it. Nice. Yeah, baby, jazz. Yeah, maybe I'll come back around Christmas and. We could play a few. Yeah, okay, if you pay me. Yeah. Do anything. Payola. Yeah. I'm the, I'm the stealth payola guy. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> you, you don't, do you ever, didn't you get back together with the, the drummer a little while yeah, ago? Yeah, yeah, John Densmore. All right. He, in fact, he's coming to the show uh, Sunday, he's Sunday a, night. He's a golfer too? No, he's, he's going to play. Not a golfer, but he's going to play, yeah. play some door songs with us. And, uh, is, is it expensive to golf? Is it like a lot of money? Uh, it can be or or not. You know, like if you play at a public course like uh, Encino Balboa out, out in the valley and you go late in the afternoon, it's like 10 bucks, you know. And how much is like a set of? Now, if you want to join Riviera, where I'm a member at, 300000 A what? Dollars to join. Uh, it's a private club. Hang on. And now, what's that? What'd you get for three hundred grand? A lifetime membership? You, yeah, yeah. Anything and and else? you, but you still have to pay monthly, like two thousand dollars. <laughs> really? Yeah. What does that include? Uh, massages or anything? No, no, nothing. Nothing. Jeez. Yeah. That's but crazy. you know what? When my dad joined there, Riviera, in nineteen fifty-six, we paid six hundred dollars. Even that sounds like a lot to me. It was back in fifty-six. But, you know, now I guess inflation has taken over. Now it's 300000 That's crazy. I know. I guess it keeps the riffraff out, right? Well, I guess. Uh, and and there's a year's waiting list trying to people trying to get in. People want to f- give, throw away 300 not grand. Yeah, just to join. It is a great golf course. It's probably the best one. That's, that's the one off of Wilshire there, right? No, no, it's the one in the Palisades off of Sunset. Put, oh, yeah, yeah, Capri. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. That's where they used to have the LA Open, and they've had the US Open there, yeah. and Ben Hogan always used to win there and stuff. Yeah. So a lot, a lot of history. Okay, we're here with Robbie Krieger and Scott Medlock. And they have the benefit coming up for uh, St. Jude's. Yeah. Do you want to say anything else from it? Go ahead, Is there any other musicians I'm missing? Yeah, we oh, got. Oh yeah, we got plenty of musicians coming. Um, Alex Lifeson from uh, Rush. We're going to do some Rush songs. Um, we got Willie Nelson's kids, kids, uh, you know, Lucas and Micah, mm-hmm. and their band, uh, The Promise of the New. Uh, I mean, Promise of the Real. Uh, we got this kid named Ray Gorin, who's an amazing young guitar player. Uh, and um, he's going to play and uh, we got Elliot Easton from the Cars is going to play uh, some Cars songs and uh, Danny Serafin from Chicago original drummer from Chicago uh, as well as Jason Sheff who is the singer of Chicago so they're going to be doing some Chicago and Bill Champlin right Yeah. who else we usually get, we'll have like a few guys from each group come jam. Oh, Orienti's, she usually plays right, with Orienti. us. She had the big jam session at the end. Yeah. Everyone yeah. gets up. Right. Yeah, she's badass. <laughs> let's, uh, let's play some Doors, Wild Child. Yeah. Is that okay with you? That's a good one. Okay, Jonesy's Jukebox, Gal OS, take it away. <laughs> You're listening to Jonesy's Jukebox on Gal OS. That was Rush. Working man, and we have the cars. You're all I've got tonight, and the doors, wild child. And we're here.
here with uh, Robbie Krieger of The Doors and Scott Medlock, sports artist. And um, do you want to say what you guys are doing or do you want me to do it? Go ahead, read, what, read what you got. My, va- my voice sounds better than yours anyway. Yeah. Um, well, you, fr- you threw me off now, Rob. <laughs> okay, Saturday, October 27th, Rock and Ride. Sunday. It's like a bike race. Is it a race? Right. No. Yeah. It's just a ride. Yeah. Oh, it's just a ride. Could be okay. a race if you want, if you're competitive. Yeah. And then uh, Sunday, all star concert at Saddle Rock Ranch in Malibu. All right. And that's up off of Canaan Road in Mulholland. And Monday, 29th, Rock and Roll Golf Classic. How long does a golf game take if you go to four? How many, how many holes is there? Well, if you play 18 holes, it should be four, four hours. Should be. Yeah, a lot of times it's longer if there's some hackers out there getting in the way. But uh, Knocking the ball in the sand and stuff. <laughs> Well, they lose their ball, and then they have to spend you know, too much time looking for it. Um, what happens if you hit a ball and it, no one can find it? Are, are they out of the game? <laughs> No, that's a two-stroke penalty. You and they, they, re, re-tee it. And you, where, where do you put the ball to play it again? Well, you go back to the tee and hit to, another to, one. To, yeah. to the, okay. What you're supposed to do is a, if you hit it in the woods and you think you might be lost, you hit another provisional ball just in case, you know. Have they ever changed the rules over, over the years? Yeah, they have. Uh, but that rule has, has pretty stayed pretty much the same. Yeah. Yeah. What do you wear when you go out there? Uh, well, I wear stuff to cover up from the sun, you know. It's yeah. Every inch, um, big hat, <laughs> sleevey things, you know, on yeah. the arm. But, uh, you know, you can wear shorts or a uh, uh, golf shirt. You know, it depends on where you're playing, too. If you're playing in a public course like Encino Balboa, you could wear you could wear no shirt at all, or you know <laughs> that's what me and Alice Cooper used to do. Yeah, we used to just to wear shorts. That was it. He's a mad golfer, isn't he? Oh yeah, yeah, he's crazy. He's, is he any good? He is good. He's very good. Yeah. When I used to play with him, he was terrible. Yeah. That was right after he stopped drinking. <laughs> yeah. He switched to uh, golf. Like I said, that's uh, golf is the only good addiction. Yeah. Is it too late for me to pick it up? Never too late. Never too late. In fact, uh, I've got a guy, Bobby Hines, uh, that teaches out at my at my studio. We have a golf simulator at my uh, music studio. A golf? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's out in Glendale, and he'll teach you how to play. Wow. You gotta come out. He he loves your show, by the way. He's your biggest fan. Oh. Tell him thanks. <laughs> Well, he should be listening if he's big. Oh, he'll friend. be listening. Thanks. He will listen. You know, the cool thing, Jonesy, is uh, in golf, if you've never played, you don't have any bad habits that you have to fix. So it's actually an advantage. Yeah. 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 Because it's harder to unlearn things than it is to learn them yeah. in, in golf. Is is the stance, like, very important that you see guys there with their wiggling in their, their feet? Is that is, like, have you ever thrown your back out? It looks like you throw your back out a lot if you don't know oh, what yeah. you're doing. Every every golfer has thrown his back out yeah. uh, at least uh, once or twice. And, and do you have a buggy or do you walk? Um, Would you do prefer? both? I do both. I I try to walk it as much as possible. But uh, it's a lot of standing though, right? If you don't have a buggy, you lose, you're standing. I hate standing. Yeah. I like to <laughs> I like to either lie down or walk. <laughs> Yeah, I, no, I mean the you know the guys on the tour they're they're walking, it's four days in a row, and they're walking five miles a day, that's a pretty good, uh, a lot of exercise. It is right. Yeah, I mean people think golfers are, you know, not. Uh, it's it's very, a relaxed, yeah, easy. But uh, hell, if you walk uh, eighteen holes, that's five miles. Yeah, I don't think I'll do it. The idea of that. <laughs> hey, it's never too late to learn, though. Never too late. Well, yeah. Most people that play golf, they they do become addicted to it. It's because it is so difficult. You see all these, the best athletes in the world. Yeah. 
they it bugs them because they can't conquer it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know a lot of guys in England, soccer players, professional soccer players, they all play golf. Yeah. yeah. They love it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hockey players, they're, they're usually pretty good golfers. Mm. I remember I, be, I played with Sandy Koufax once. Who's he? He was a pitcher in Dodgers back in the day, you know. You were Dodgers Six. fan? Oh, yeah. What's happening with them? They're not doing good, I hear. <sighs> well, not until later today. Today's a big day. We're going to win the next three in a row. Go back so you, to Boston, one up. So you're down then? Are you down? Two down, yeah, two down. It's, it's the best of seven. So, uh, and where's this one, in L.A. or in Boston? It's here. So yeah, they'll, have, so they'll have all the fans there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Does yeah, that yeah. make a difference, you think? Oh, Definitely. are you kidding? Yeah, for sure. I got, and Robbie, Robbie threw out the first pitch last year during the uh, World Series. Did you? Yeah. yeah. Well, it was before the World Series. Oh, right, yeah. yeah. It got us into the World Series. Cause yeah, if I hadn't pitch. done that, it, we wouldn't have got into the World Series. So it's all about you. <laughs> now, what about, have you ever done a national anthem on a guitar with one of them things? No, never did that. Did you? I have. Did not, you? Not, did? A, not a, a massive place like that. A, a boxing game, I did it. Oh. Ah. Uh, a boxing event. How did you do? You know what, man? It's very difficult. It's, it is. Everyone's looking at you. <laughs> you got to play these notes. <laughs> I know. It's not, they're not really a, it's not really a guitar song, is it? No, and it's very, it, it's a real mind F, you know. So what key did you do it in? E. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, it, yeah, it was very nerve wracking. Very nerve-wracking. Well, Hendrix did pretty well. Yeah, yeah. But I'm glad I did it. And I would do it again for the right thing. I think I've got it down a bit now. Yeah. Took me a long time to learn it. I'll bet, yeah, yeah to do it properly. I, uh, yeah. So you brought a sitar. Yeah, I did. Uh, it's an electric sitar. I've got one just like that, but not that color. My one's by a guy called... Uh, uh, Fingy Jones, his name is. You got, you got the, uh, I think the original one. The Jerry Jones is the one I got. Jerry Jones. And then you got the uh, the coral one. Yeah. I think I think was the original. I'm not sure. But uh, they're pretty good. There, there, there was a few records. Uh, did you ever play one on the Doors? Um, well, I, I played a real sitar, uh, not a sitar, but a um, tambura. You know, How the hell do you play them? They're easy, actually. That, that's just a drone. The drone, right? Yeah. You, yeah. you can't really change key with them, right? Yeah. I mean, it has four strings, so you can tune it however you want. Yeah. But it's just, you know, you're just droning. Yeah. Um, I think that, what song was that? Indian Summer, I think. Um, but I did, I had a sitar, a real one, and I, I went to the uh, Ravi Shankar school oh, yeah. to learn. Uh, it was the Kinara School. The, I don't think they still have it, but yeah, that was that was pretty neat. Ravi showed up a few times. And, yeah, yeah. There's a few, uh, you know, classic records that got sitar on. Oh yeah, uh, George Harrison used it a lot, quite a bit. But um, like Tamla Motown, you what was that one? Uh, down, down, tis, uh, uh, down, down. Down, 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 down. People say I'm alive. Oh, Smokey Robinson, yeah. Ain't that a sitar yeah. on there? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Electric one? I, I don't know if it's electric. Did they have an electric ones back then? I, I think, I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a real sitar. I don't Could know. be wrong, though. Yeah, I don't, I don't think they had the choral sitar at, at, until later. In the 70s. So you think that's a real one? It could be. Do you want a $20 bet on it? No. Okay. <laughs> I, bet, I bet it is an electric one. $10. All right, 10 bucks. Okay, you're going to start Googling. Find it, get to the bottom of this. <laughs> um, should, we, should we do a little bit of jamming? Yeah. What, what, I just want to give a shout out to Tony Joe White. Man, I I love that guy. He used to come on. He came on my show once many years ago, and we jammed. And he was a cool dude. I love Poke Salanani. I love uh, Rainy Night in Georgia, Georgia that he wrote, and Brooke Benton covered it. He wrote that. Yeah. Wow. And uh, he died yesterday. Uh, heart attack, I believe it was. Uh, 
I, f I believe he was 75 in Tennessee. We're on Tennessee. I believe so. TN, when they say TN, that means Tennessee. TN? Yeah. 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 So. Yeah, he was great. He was definitely, definitely an original. Yeah. Good writer. Yeah, he had that voice. Oh. Anyway, should All right, we let's uh, play that? Do you want to play that? Ah, oh, poke salad, Annie. It's gonna be a disaster. Oh, ah. Said it was a shame. Everybody walking on the chain. Oh. Daddy was lazy and no can. Claimed they had a bad back. All in family was good for. Carrying watermelons on my, my trunk patch. Poke salad and has got, got your granny. granny. Everybody said a wall was a shame. Mama always working on the chain. Oh. Take it away, oh, baby. Show me what you got. To Jonesy's jukebox, KLOS, and uh, that was a fun little jam. Yeah, with the old sitar. Very cool. Little ode to Tony Joe White, Poke Salad Annie. That was at the Doors Indian Summer, and then we did actually play the uh, the real one by Tony Joe. There you go. There's no way that's uh, a real sitar. Electric no You didn't hear a sitar? No. You kidding me? <laughs> Maybe my ears are bad. There's sitar written all over it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh, it's me playing it. <laughs> I thought you were playing it. Oh, man. <laughs> that is hilarious. <laughs> Okay. Well, I heard a sitar. Play it again. Okay. 
Sounds good on there. Hold on. I think that's just a guitar. Man. That sounds like a sitar. It does sound like it. I'll play the beginning. Is that me? I don't even know what's going on. Are you playing it, Shovel, with no, me? No, that's your phone. You, let me hear you play that's your, your, your one. That's your start again. <laughs> it's a sit. No, you know what it is? I think it's it, he's got kind of a wah pedal on it or something. It, it sounds sitari, but we it's gotta not. get we gotta get to the bottom of this. <laughs> Come on, twenty bucks, man. You said ten. <laughs> now it's twenty bucks. Now you feel confident. Um, Robbie Krieger. That was uh, that was his voice you just heard, and his and his buddy Scott Medlock. And uh, what you doing? I'm spaced out. <laughs> I'm all in my head about this sitar. Uh, this weekend we're doing our St. Jude's event out in uh, it's out in Malibu, and uh, we have a golf event on Monday at Moore Park Country Club, and that's going to be pretty cool because uh, they have a pro tournament out at Sherwood the day before, so a lot of the pros are going to come out and play at our tournament. Uh, who's coming? Uh, Billy Andrade. Yeah, some of the guys. Tim Petrovic. Tim Petrovic. Uh, we'll wrangle all the guys that uh, want to come out. They really want to come out for the concert to see Robbie and yeah. Alex Lyson and all those guys jam. But the golf has almost become kind of secondary because it's the music part of this event has grown so much thanks to Robbie. So. How is the, uh, the, the guitar player from Rush? How's his golf? Oh, he's amazing. He's good. Very good golfer, yeah. He, of course, you know, he lives up in Canada, so he only gets to play for half the year. They don't have golf courses up there? Oh, they do, but, they, you know, it's so cold that they can only play in the summer. I see. Yeah, the course is closed. Actually, Alex said yesterday that they're closing this week because Already? of it. Wow. Yeah, I was up there with him and Getty last week, and they were closed. I mean, they were getting ready to close because of the frost, you know. Yeah. Pretty damn cold, <laughs> especially yeah. for golf. No, he's a really good player. Yeah. Not as good as me. <laughs> You've been playing longer than uh, probably. Yeah, I, I don't know when he's. Yeah, that's true. No, he started. Uh, what did he say? Ninety something. So he didn't start when he was a kid like I did. Yeah. What's a birdie? A birdie is one under par. What's that mean? Par is what you're supposed to shoot on a particular hole. So if it, if his hole is like. Over 500 yards, that's a five par. So you, it's you're supposed to make a five five strokes, and if it's a f more like 400 yards, uh, then it's a four par. If it's like uh, if you can reach the green in one shot, then that's a three par. Uh. And if you make a two on that hole, that's a birdie. If you make a one, that's an eagle. Well, what 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 do they mean? Who come up with that word birdie? What, what's he got to do with anything? I think it all started in St. Andrews, Scotland, didn't it? <laughs> and yeah, bleeding Scots yeah. again. Yeah. yeah <laughs> oh, it's a birdie. It's a birdie. <laughs> We're going to visit the Duke. See you in a minute. You're listening to Jonesy's Jukebox. Carl OS. That was Donovan. Erdy Gurdy, man. We had Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. Don't come around here no more. Supposedly that was Dave Stewart playing the sitar on that one. The Beatles, Tomorrow Never Knows, The Stooges, TVI, The Doors, Love Me Two Times, then Dead's version of Paint It Black with a sitar on it. So you've started something here, Robbie. We've just been playing some <laughs> sitars. Right, right. Well, I brought it in for that very reason. You're very good. <laughs> Manipulator. <laughs> well, I had a real sitar back in the day, uh, uh, and I, I want to get a new, another one too. Uh, I'm, I've been thinking about getting one lately. Are but, they called sitars because you have to sit to play them? 
you know, somebody said like that the, the big other ones. day. Yeah, you, you uh, don't play them standing up. No, you can't play it standing up. Uh, I mean, I guess you could put a strap on it. Excuse they're, me. They're actually very light. They're really light. Yeah. So you could play it with a with a strap somehow. I, strap I guess. one of them. But I, I I don't know. I don't I don't think that's the reason it's called a sitar because that, <laughs> <laughs> that you know I don't know how you say sit in Indian. Yeah, yeah. That it's not sit. Yeah, I don't have no idea. Yeah. Do you want to have a bet on that one? That maybe <laughs> it's called sitar because you have to sit to play it. I, I'll bet. I'll bet on. I've that. already just give you ten bucks. <laughs> I know. I lost the bet on uh, what did we what the 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 Smokey Robinson song right yeah you thought it was a sitar on uh, what the hell was that song tracks of my, tracks of my, tracks of my tears. tears but it sort of sounds sitari but it's it's really a guitar played by who mm, we don't know that one it was a Smokey Robinson band guy no we know no who it is Marv Toplin. Still sounds like a sitar to me, but I had no problem giving <laughs> you ten bucks. Um, so, do you want to uh, talk about your? You want to talk about your event coming up? Uh, yeah, we're gonna have a good time uh, Sunday night. This is Scott Medlock talking. He's, he's a sports artist. artist. I mean, he's not only a sports artist. He he paints all kinds of stuff, but but uh, he's he's done some really cool. Uh, paintings of golfers he did one of babe ruth that's amazing and uh, he does horses and uh, all kinds of stuff do they sell for a lot of money your paintings yeah more than i ever thought they would <laughs> what do you know what's the most that one of your paintings have gone for uh hundred and fifty thousand. and that was uh someone can sign you or they said i just want to buy that yeah actually uh so the Babe Ruth, Robbie was talking about, that was commissioned by Babe Ruth's daughter. Wow. She was pretty elderly, and actually it was funny. My, my manager at the time called and said, hey, uh, this, this, this elderly lady is on the phone, and she was saying it's Babe Ruth's daughter. And, you know, we thought she was, they were bluffing, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, <laughs> we kind of <laughs> blew it off a little bit, and then they said, no, no, it's really uh, Babe Ruth's daughter. So... They commissioned me to do a uh, 100th anniversary of Babe Ruth, and this is 1995. And it was a big one? Yeah. Was it it was, well, the si size, you mean? Yeah, canvas? Yeah, it was a canvas. Actually, no, I did it on paper. It was oil paint on paper. Yeah. And uh, But, you know, the value of it, we didn't know uh, the Yankees had a silent partner, you know, Steinbrenner. They said, oh, yeah, he wants to trade you for the original. And, you know, I thought what's he going to trade? And then I say, oh, I think they want to give you, you know, Free Babe Ruth's jockstrap. To <laughs> <laughs> Free tickets to the game. Yeah. Oh, wow. I, said, nah, I don't know about that one. So <laughs> Maybe a mitt. You never know if it's really Babe's mitt. I doubt they're going to give me that. So yeah. I said, how about 150000 That'll work. <laughs> and they yeah. said, okay, obviously, okay. Mm. Thanks for coming in, buddy. Well, thanks for having us. That's Robbie Krieger talking right now. Yeah, we uh, we see each other a lot of nights when I'm walking my dog, and he comes home late at night. And there's coyotes about, and uh, it's very quiet. Yeah, we stop, at least so far. Stop and have a little chat. We moan about our fellow band members sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> and then we drive. I drive off. <laughs> yeah, we both live up in the canyon. Um. Well, good luck. With your everything All right, man. You I wish you could make it, but uh, we'll be thinking about you. Yeah. And uh, yeah, everybody, come on out to the uh, St. Jude's, uh, our show and our golf tournament, and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun this weekend. I know people are going to be uh, watching the Dodgers too. But uh, you, you, you going to go to the Dodgers to watch the game? I wish. I wish. I'm, got too much stuff to do with our event yeah i heard that there was some tickets in the other place who are they playing i forget i'm not a fan boston yeah. boston that they, there was tickets going for like five grand that's it was the cheap tickets yeah yeah because it's already sold out there. i know that was crazy yeah they're going for more here in la oh are they yeah because everyone's here in la so yeah but they started out cheaper right yeah oh, were, it's crazy. yeah it's like 500 you know 
when a couple of weeks ago maybe yeah we're bringing the dodgers to us so come on out we're gonna have we'll have the game on one of the big screens nice yeah all right not during the show though we're gonna visit duke and we'll see you in a little bit